What's up guys, we're back. It's Friday and so you know what time it is. It's time for What The Fitness. Whew. Let's get This week we have a video from Build A Body UK. I've had interaction with this gal before. This is not gonna go well, I know it. Her uh, moniker is Fat Doctor UK and um, I'm sure I will get accused of fat shaming and racism in this video for uh, giving scientific references. But let's see what she has to say about obesity. I'm fat because I drink too much red wine and I don't exercise enough. That's not true. You're not fat because of what you eat and how much exercise you do. That is the line that everybody is led to believe. Left you now and ran up yeah. and down Leicester Square for three hours and then went home and had a piece of lettuce and then came in and did the same tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that. I would start to look like a supermodel. Only for a few months and then you would stop. In fact, you would start regaining weight within the first year. That is a fact. That's not fiction. That is a absolute fact. And there is literally no evidence that weight loss is going to benefit anybody's health, whether they're a child or an adult. I'm willing to state my medical career on the okay. fact that you I are, medical that career. the lies that we've been sold about obesity, especially childhood obesity, are not true. They are there to benefit the weight loss industry, not to benefit children. The evidence is very clear. <laughs> Up to 90 98% of people that attempt weight loss will have regained all the weight within five years. That is up to 98% of people, and that is absolutely unquestionable. Second thing, this idea that, that energy in and energy out and energy calorie deficits is nonsense. So this is an example of having a partial truth and then a big lie. Is she right that people in research studies where they lose weight, that they tend to regain it? Yes. Is she right that you will lose weight in research studies, people lose weight up to a certain point and then begin regaining it? Yes. So the question becomes, why? Well, her supposition is that they're still hardcore sticking to the diet and the weight is just coming back on. So first off, you can't create matter out of nothing. Did you take basic physics? Those carbons that you're using to build mass, they have to come from somewhere. This isn't like a wizard just like, and you have body fat. No, you have to create the carbons from somewhere. So where do they come from? From eating. So why do people regain the weight? Because they stop adhering to the diet. If she actually read these studies, rather than just parroting the top line, if she actually read them and looked at the adherence data, she would see that these people's regain in body weight correlates exactly to the drop in adherence. They just stop following the diet. How many of you have done diets and just you were sticking to, like be honest with yourself because some of you will comment and be like, I was doing the diet. No, you weren't. How many of you were actually doing it and then started regaining the weight? By the way, where are all these fat concentration camp victims? Oh wait, they don't exist because when you eat less than you expend, you lose weight. And this idea that oh, losing weight is not beneficial to health if you are normal weight or lean, losing weight probably not beneficial to health and may actually be a negative. If you are obese and you lose weight, we see improvements in your risk for cardiovascular disease, cancer, type two diabetes, all markers of metabolic health improve. And even in people, because there's this, well, if you just practice healthy habits, you get all the benefits of them. There's what's called fat but fit, which is uh, people who have normal blood work, but they are obese. And so some people have said, well, if the blood work's normal, then what's the problem? And so there actually was a comparison done of the risk of cardiovascular disease, mortality, and cancer in people who were basically fat but fit versus people who had similar blood markers but were normal weight. And they still saw an increased risk in the obese or the overweight individuals. And what they tend to find is even though their blood markers may not be bad at that time, they progressively get worse versus people who maintain a normal or lean physique, their blood markers don't get worse. So if you're overweight or obese, it can be that you just haven't pushed it enough to start seeing it show up perturbations in your blood yet, but they will come with enough time. And even if they don't, you're still at higher risk of cancer, cardiovascular disease, and mortality than people who are normal weight or lean. This lady has been able to build a platform for herself by essentially targeting desperate people who find it easier to not embrace the personal responsibility aspect of this. And so unfortunately, if she's right, if she really is right, then there's nothing any of us can do about obesity. Nothing can be done. I wonder what she would say to people like David Goggins or people who have lost really large amounts of weight and kept it off. How does she explain them? 
Because yes, most people fail, but not everybody. There are millions of people who succeed. How does she explain those data points? So unfortunately, she's been able to build a following by targeting people who are probably tired of hearing about weight loss, feel very shamed, and this is a, a short-term way for them to feel better. But if you have no personal responsibility, then you also have no power and you're a victim and you're helpless. That is not really helpful messaging because at the end of the day, it may not be your fault. And I, I used to be somebody who, if somebody was obese, I was, I was 100%, that's their fault, it's a choice. I no longer believe that. In fact, I believe a lot of the reasons people become obese or overeat are not even conscious decisions. It may not have been your fault, but it is your responsibility if you want to change. And I think that messaging gets lost. I'm sure if she sees this video, she will uh, accuse me of all sorts of nasty different things, which she's done before. Uh, and I will continue to just calmly point out the data of the human randomized control trials. Peace, we out.